Hi everyone. Now I recently had a bit of an impulse buy and I bought this TP-Link power plug here. So it's a network device um, with a power, power socket and it's also got a power meter in it. So I was just curious to muck around with this and see what, it, see what it's all about. So I'm going to go through um, how that works and have a look on Wireshark at some of the packets as they get around. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in. It doesn't take long before it starts flashing. So at the moment it's just got its uh, green Wi-Fi light and now it's flashing green and orange. So I'll have a look in the wireless uh, capture and see what's going on in the air. Okay, now if I do a packet capture, I can see that it's broadcasting an SSID here called uh, TP-Link Smart Plug whoop de wop Now this 340D happens to be the last part of the MAC address, so 340D. Okay, other than that, it's just an open network with all the bit rates there, and it's just sitting there transmitting. So what I'll do is I'll connect to that just to see what happens. Okay, now if I go to the MacBook and just look for networks, I'll see it here, open network. I'll just join that and see what happens. Okay, so it's joined. I've got myself an IP address. And if I look at the, uh, the gateway, that's the uh, address of the adapter. Okay, now I'm just going to use Nmap with Kali running on a VM here and look at that address and see what's open. And there we go. So there's no web server running, which is a surprise, but it's a good surprise, I suppose. Uh, but we do have this port 9999 open. Okay, so I'll keep an eye on that when I muck around on the network and see what's going on. Okay, now I'm going to start the app and uh, try and set this thing up. Now I'm still connected to my home wireless network. So I'll start the app, uh, which is called CASA, and see how we go. Now on the packet capture, I'm just capturing for the MAC address of that adapter, but just data frames to cut down on all the beacons stuff. Okay, so here we go. I'll try and add a device. I will add a device. Smart plug, whoop de whoop. Check that it's on. Go next. Uh, yes, it's flashing green and orange as we saw. So I'll go next. Now while that's doing that, you'll see the network icon. Uh, look, I've, I've set up a couple before, just to, to be honest with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and set up that first one. And what I'll notice is that see it's dropped off the Wi-Fi and it's joined the open network. Okay, now I've done a packet capture on this, but you can see straight away there was some uh, TCP port 9999 in there. Okay, so it's doing something across that open network on that TCP port 999 that I saw in Nmap that was open. So what I'll do is I'll just um, select my network here, CWNE88, password, some secret, okay, join that up and see what happens. Now I see my phone network has gone back to my normal uh, network, it's not that open network anymore. So it sent a bit of data as we saw across the open network to that thing and now it's showing is on. Now on my home network I've set that IP to be blocked, okay, it's not allowed out but I'll have a look in a minute at um, Wireshark and see what's actually going on. Right now even as I'm waiting for the app to, to finish doing its thing, the device itself is showing uh, solid lights and it's connected to my home network now and it's stopped broadcasting its own open SSID. So it's now a client on my network. And if I have a look back on the app here, it wants me to set up a name for it. So I'll just call it uh, one. Okay, give it an icon, blah, blah, blah. Save that, be done, be done. Okay, so now uh, it's connected to the network, so is this, and it seems that I can turn it on and off with the phone. And it's pretty responsive. Okay, so that's good. Okay, what I'm capturing now is just the IP addresses of the phone and the device here. So I can see traffic between the phone and the device. Now, there's a bit of UDP stuff there, which I'll come back to. It also seems to be port 9999. I haven't looked at that yet, so I'll come back to that. But this TCP stuff is what I'm interested in. So now if I press uh, the button on the app to turn it off, okay, it clicks off. You see a bit of um, traffic went through. I've turned it on. There it is again. So if I just look at this session only for when I turned it on, okay, I'll just follow that TCP stream. And that's what we saw. I sent this lot out from the phone 
and this lot came back. Now, I had a, a bit of a look at this before, and I noticed that that's always the same. Okay, so I'll turn it off. I mean, that one's different. Uh, turn it on again. I'll start the capture as well. Okay, that's turning off. That's turning on. That's turning off, and that's turning on. So those four TCP streams, if I look at them and just view it as our raw will do, okay, if I go up, you'll see the only things that really change are the last bits here. So the data is the same when I transmit the on command. Even though I can't really figure out what that data is, what I'm going to do is save it. So to do that, just go back to follow TCP stream. Uh, stream zero. This is when I turned it on. Okay, so do that raw, just the one from the phone to that. So that that's the data that got sent out on the network from the phone to the device to turn it on. So I'll save that, and I'll call it um, data from phone for on. Okay, so I've just saved it. Okay, now that I've got the um, payload dump from Wireshark of when I turned the device on from the phone, I can just cat that to netcat to the IP address of this device here. And when I do that, I can turn the device on. And I also did a capture for the off data payload. And it's the same thing. So I can turn it on and off from here, even though I can't understand the data that went to and from it. So that's at least a start. Okay, now I'm going back to the comms between the phone and the device and just looking at UDP port 999 this time and I see that every few seconds, about every three, the phone sends out, I'll just stop this, the phone sends out a broadcast, okay, of data and we get a unicast response from the device. Now I actually have another device on the network but just not at the moment because I bought two of these things. And what happens is when it sends out a broadcast, each device responds. So basically, it's, it's like a, a scan to see if the, what devices are on the network. Now, the thing about this is the um, broadcast will stay on the subnet that I'm on, okay? But with the control TCP data that we saw, that can go through um, networks and stuff because it's not a broadcast address. So even though it uses this broadcast UDP message to see who's out there and it gets responses, that's good for the phone app um, in a simple network, but you don't need that to control it. You can be across networks and send the TCP command to control it. If you want these devices on their own you know, special network, you can still control them with um, the TCP control. They just wouldn't show up on the app because it relies on a broadcast on its own um, broadcast domain. Okay, so it was about this time when I was thinking about starting to write a Python script to send the on and off commands and control this device my own way, when I decided to look online to see if anyone else had done this. And lo and behold, someone's done it all right, and they've done a fantastic job. Now, I'll, I'll put a link to this for sure, uh, so you can see what I looked at here. But I, I came at this from the networking approach. They've come at it from the software side, so they got the firmware and pulled that apart and saw it that way. Anyway, it's good. So what they've done is they found out how that protocol works and uh, decrypted it, basically. And they've provided a Lua script to run in Wireshark, which I'll load up and I'll show you again that data that we just saw. But now what's actually going through is basically JSON going through with a minor alteration. But um, I'll link to that. It's got all the good stuff, as I said. And, um, and yeah, you've got to give them full marks for that. They've also provided a Python script to run some of those commands. So it saved me doing it. Um, so I'm very glad I found that. Uh, so I'll go through some of that now. Okay, so just to recap, if I run the app with Wireshark Standard, turn it on, you see a network stream. Turn it off, there's another one. On, off. Nothing special, just some TCP, some data that we don't know, okay? But what I'll do now is I'll close that and here's the script that they uh, provided, these other guys, okay? That's the Lua script for Wireshark, and that is it. Now I'll copy that to the plugins directory of Wireshark, and then start Wireshark again. Okay, so I've got Wireshark going. Now this time when I press the button, turn it on, turn it off, you can see it knows that protocol, 
It's called TP-Link Smart Home. So now what I can do as well is just filter by that uh, protocol and that's all I'm showing. So, so now I really get going. I'll just run this again. So when I start, there it is, two packets. One that way and one coming back. Turn it off. Bang. And if I just look at the JSON uh, that got sent out, you can see I was setting the relay state to one to turn it on. And then some, some info came back. And then when I turned it off, relay state to zero. Okay, so there it is. That's what I was actually sending in that payload before. Okay, but this time we can uh, decode it. Okay, now that I can decode the data that goes through those JSON objects there, um, I'm going to have a look at the capture I did earlier when I was doing the setup of this thing. Remember, it was an open network to the device, and I provisioned it by providing the password for my real home network. So now that I can uh, decode it, you can see clearly that there's my network name, and there's the password I use. Okay, so essentially in the clear, if anyone was listening, they would have heard and got hold of the password for my real network here. So could be a problem, just something to keep in mind, you know, in case there's people around who would do this sort of thing. Okay, going back to the app for just a second, um, I've plugged a lamp in here, so turn that on and off. And what I'll do, just, I just wanted something plugged in, so I'll turn that on, and the app also has a power meter. Well, the device has the power meter, and the app can show the energy and power that I'm using. So this lamp is using six and a quarter watts. Okay, so six watt lamp, just an LED light there. So what I can do, obviously that data is coming through the network, now that we can decode it, if I have a look on Wireshark here, we can see coming back, well, what's going there first is get real time for this e-meter. And coming back is voltage, current, and power. Now I can apply these as a column here, which I've done here to show just the values as they come in. But it's not pretty because all of that is the value. It's one value really, which is the um, JSON string. But you can see the power is, is this one here. So you know that the third uh, value here is the power. So you could keep an eye on it that way in Wireshark as it goes. So like if I turn the light off, then uh, the power usage would, would go down. See that third one's down to zero. Okay. But what I'm going to do is use the Python tools that uh, the guys provided who decoded this and use my Raspberry Pi with an LCD to make a power meter for this device. Okay, so here's my Raspberry Pi with uh, the power meter. And if I turn the lamp on, that'll uh, show the power that it's using, just like it outputs uh, on the console. So that just shows you can use this your own way if you want to do something you want, like make a power meter out of a Raspberry Pi or something. I put this in line with the uh, oven that we've got here to measure the amount of energy it takes to cook a roast. Now. This uh, little oven here is pretty good. You can see there though, that as soon as you turn it on, it's drawing just over six amps. But we'll see how much energy it takes for the two hour roast to cook. Okay, so now just having another look on the uh, Raspberry Pi LCD, you can see the power meter there showing uh, about one and a half kilowatts. And also in the JSON output, you can see the current and the voltage, but the current there is about six and a half amps. And now that the roast is done, we can see the total energy consumption which was uh, just over one and a half kilowatt hours. So that's not too bad for this oven to do a roast. Okay, so there it is. That's the rundown on this TP-Link device, which overall I'm pretty impressed with. Um, I've got it blocked at the firewall because it tries to call home, of course, so you can use the cloud functionality, but me and cloud don't mix well. So I've just allowed DNS and NTP so we can set its clock because it does have a scheduling function there where you can set start and stop times. But anyway, that's the rundown on this, and I'll see you next time with something else. See ya.